has uh, taken a decision to try and stop it in some capacity, and that is to, to prevent people being able to bring in uh, animal parts that they may have obtained as trophies through this canned hunting, which is basically animals in compounds that you can pay money to go and shoot lions and rhinoceros, stuff like that. Extraordinary as it was, as I was talking about, I was still going, nah, surely human beings wouldn't want to do this, but, oh yeah, they'll spend a lot of money on it. Uh, Donna Leah Patman is the founder of For the Love of Wildlife, and she knows a lot about this subject, and we're going to talk to her right now. Thanks for your time, Donna Leah. Yeah, hi, it's um, Donna Lee. It's Donna Lee. I was just looking going, do I Donna Lee or Donna Lee? So I'll go with Donna Lee. Good idea. Um, now, th this this whole, uh, this canned hunting, I know it's not new. I've, re I've sort of did a bit of research afterwards and saw that it's been around for a long time, but why? I mean, what what is the psyche of people that want to go and do this? Oh, it's horrific. And the industry is the biggest growth industry in Africa and it's having a huge effect on wildlife populations and it's seriously the con in conservation. Um, we have a lot of Australian volunteers who go to Africa believing that they're assisting in rehabilitating wildlife back to the wild. But these animals are humanised and so there seriously is no hunt and um, it's just atrocious. Okay, now you're saying the con in conservation. That's what one of the arguments that was put to me was that uh, this, the money raised from this goes into conserving animals in the wildlife. Have you had anything rational that's been put to you that convinces you of that? Well, the reality of it is uh, trophy hunting um, adds very little to the economy of Africa. It's something like 1.8%. Um, and the, these canned hunting sites, actually the money just stays with the proprietors of the business. It doesn't um, go out to local communities. They don't employ a lot of the locals. It's volunteers that um, do all the work and these volunteers go over believing they're helping with conservation and they come away appalled. Mm. There's very little vet care, there's inbreeding, animals are treated badly, they're highly stressed and we're talking about animals like lions in small cages. It's, it's, not a, it's just atrocious. What can, what can be done about it though? The reality is if there's money, if there's profit, how do you stop it? Okay, well, one of the things we can do is make Australians aware of the industry. Most Aussies have never heard of the term. So if we can arrest um, Australians going to these unscrupulous um, reserves and uh, volunteering, because we just assume that volunteering is free, they're paying 700 1500 US dollars a week for the, the privilege of being at these reserves. And that's a rip-off in itself. So they're already being financially supported just by our volunteers attending. If we can stop that, if we can educate our travel agents, our volunteer groups, because they're also being cons, believing that... And the websites for these reserves are highly sophisticated. There's yeah. a lot of money behind it, and you would believe that you're going somewhere ethical. Um, we also have to, um, hunting's an old paradigm, we have to more, move forward into ethical and sustainable tourism and uh, the bigger dollar comes from photography and from ethical conservation and ethical travel. Can, can I just get a feel then, if you, if you decide that you're going to one of these uh, places, it's because yes. a lot of the time it's because you think you're going there to get up close and personal with animals, uh, help re rear them in some way, uh, learn about them. Well, how, how do you not see the fact that they are, are being shot? I mean, how, how do they do it? They must stagger the sort of trips because there must be people that go there and do all this work and then the, the hunts, as they're, as they're called, for want of yeah. a better term, go on later? I mean, how do they, how do they disguise it? They do. Well, what they offer is that the... The attraction is that you get to feed um, lion cubs and so the cutesy idea of being able to raise or to be with a lion club, a cub. So they have particular um, farms where you can go and you believe that it's an orphan cub. Now these cubs are taking off the mother a day after birth which forces the lioness back into estrus which means she then is back on heat which normally in the wild would never happen. So she's already under stress from having to be a breeding machine. So any reserve that has lion petting, lion walking or any of those things because they feed it back to the canned hunting industry and then they're put on those reserves. People buy these online, they rock up, they never leave their jeep. 
the animals either drugged or baited or uh, enclosed and they're shooting these animals. And the other thing, it's not a quick kill. They shoot the body either by rifle or by bow. It's a slow death because they don't want it to be a head kill because they want to preserve the trophy. Um, the it, South, yeah, well, let's we talk about the, the South African government. Do they care or, for example? Well, <laughs> well they, you know, the thing is with Africa, I believe Africa is under siege. It's being looted. And they don't have, they have enough issues with human, you know, with, with the population of Africa. They don't have the infrastructure. So money comes into the country, um, government officials are bought, and there's lots of corruption. We all know that. Mm. So we have the, uh, the South African government actually banned it in 2009. Right. But then you have the pressure from uh, the Americans, the Dallas Safari Club, from big hunt hunting organisations around the world to overturn the ruling. So this is where we have a minority group that somehow got the, the wealth and the power to overturn governments when we as the general public need to speak out. We are having, there are elephants being poached every 15 minutes. There are rhinos killed every nine hours. We have a rare herd of Namibian elephants. There are 100 left of these rare desert elephants. They've just sold nine hunting licenses so people can go and kill them. Now these get auctioned. People like Corey Knowlton, he just paid $350,000 for the right to shoot a rhino. Now these are close to extinction. How can we stop these people, the wealth of the world, thinking that it's okay to go and shoot up Africa? It's not okay. We need to speak loudly and we need to offer international pressure to Africa to say we're not tolerating this any, anymore. Wildlife belongs to the planet. All right. How, if people are listening to this and as appalled as I am, uh, have you got a website that they can come to and have a look and uh, make a decision if they can contribute yeah. some way? Yes, well, we've only just got our website up because of the, we had no idea that this was going to um, take off like it has. Mm. We also are on Facebook, so please follow us on Facebook. Um, our mission is to expose crimes against nature, so that's why I've set up the organisation. We want to expose where wildlife doesn't have the opportunity to speak or to vote or to own land. So it's our responsibility as citizens to say we need to speak up on, be on behalf of our animals. Good on you for doing it. For the love of wildlife, I take it, is the way where to search in the Google uh, box? That's right. For the yep. love of wildlife is a website that you can go to if you just listen to that and you think, oh, I can't just sit back and do nothing. If there's anything I can do, whether it's a petition or whether it's a, a donation, then maybe for the love of wildlife is a starting point. Thanks for joining us today, Donna Lee. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Good on you, Donna Lee Patman there, founder of For the Love of Wildlife. You've got to say, I know we're a long way, really, from Africa, but to know that that's going on um, every day, uh, you've got this situation where animals are hand-reared and then just thrown into a compound so that people that get their jollies off on shooting them um, can go over and spend a fortune doing so. It just beggars belief in this day and age, doesn't it? But it's happening. It's 26